Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to Aspire Thirty Two. And uh, today's topic is something really special uh, because you might have seen uh, a lot of videos on Aspire Thirty Two in uh, giving you guidance how you should go to US, how you should go to you know Australia or Middle East. But this topic is special because this topic is about uh why why maybe india better option or you may even say that okay what is the, the what are the reasons for not considering uh, going abroad uh, to practice dentistry and i have a very respectable speaker uh, here on aspire 32 today, today and his name is dr akshay kumar swami before uh, you know listening to him let me introduce you uh, let me introduce him to you he he finished his advanced education in general dentistry in us uh, that is in boston university and then he finished his uh, ms in periodontics from university of north carolina and then he is also a adjunct assistant professor at east carolina university but he is practicing uh, dentistry in mumbai a very no well known practitioner and uh, he has been uh, speaking on various topics on periodontic uh, you know foreign opportunities so first of all uh, uh, welcome to aspire 32 dr akshay i am really looking forward to listen to your thoughts and the idea which you are going to project to my viewers today thank you so much for accepting the invite to come on uh, aspire 32 thank you thank you so much uh, dr suresh for having me uh, i've heard a lot about uh, your uh, channel and uh, of course uh, having known you for the past few years i'm sure this will be a a great session and i hope to help out uh, whoever is uh, on the other side or let's say whoever is on the fence about yes. uh, either going to the us or staying back in india i hope to have some inputs on that thanks uh, viewers should know that dr akshay also helped me uh, you know when i cleared my npd exam that is when i came to know about dr akshay and uh, of course you know it is always a struggle when you want to go to foreign countries but uh, it may not be always uh you know something things which doesn't work out doesn't mean that they are against you sometimes they always you know maybe god has a different plan for you and uh, i'm sure today's uh, you know your your experience will be helpful to many many students who have a, a you know dream of going to abroad so akshay uh, let us let us go before you know before you decided to come back why did you go why did you think as a student or when did you think to go abroad and uh, you know do something in dentistry in united states uh, so uh, i finished my dentistry in uh, 2006 so uh, from davangere and uh, once i finished my dentistry uh, my father of course is a dentist and had uh, has a practice or had a practice uh, in bombay since uh, the early 80s so he's been a senior practitioner uh, in the chembur area of mumbai and uh, of course as a dentist son that was always a thought process that okay maybe once i finish dentistry i'll go back and uh, join him in practice but uh, of course uh, once we finished uh, my dentistry my father was like you are not coming back unless you uh, learn something more than what you have just learned in uh, bds so then the next thought process was okay what can i do next uh, mds of course was the natural uh, path to take so we thought about uh, giving my entrance exams and uh, again i gave my entrance exams while i was also working in a gurudwara here in chembur uh, in uh, mumbai they had a dental clinic a charitable dental clinic so i gave offered my services there learned a lot of things there uh, in that clinic but all the while thinking about what next so uh, when we were thinking we said okay i'll probably my entrance exams i did give my entrance exams for mds in india uh, did not fare that well uh, to get a good seat a good clinical seat anywhere so i dropped that idea and then we started to uh, thinking about it and my father said why don't you look at the us as an opportunity uh, as an option to go and uh, do a masters there so we said okay but i did not have any clue about what kind of subject i would want to do a masters in so then we said why don't i hone my general dentistry skills by going to boston university and doing this program called the advanced education in general dentistry or short form aegd so this was a one year program that uh, was offered in many other universities also offer that at that time boston university because we knew a lot of people uh, who had done this program so i got in touch with them applied to the program and uh, got accepted and then uh, went to boston with the idea of just honing my general dentistry skills and always thinking of okay maybe i'll come back after i do that so then i can add some value to our practice so that was a thing is uh, we wanted to add uh, or i wanted to add value to the practice here back in mumbai so always wanted to do something of that sort so that was where my journey to the us started with uh, thinking about this one year agd and then maybe planning to uh, come back 
Yeah. So you are very clear that uh, you want to go to US and it is mostly for learning and you did a one year program. And uh, I'm sure although the dental boards say that to get a license, you have to do two year course, right? That is the minimum requirement okay. to get a license if you do the residency program. Yes. But I'm also curious, you know, because many times what happens is I'm sure a lot of people, especially engineers, they think, OK, we'll go for two, three years. And uh, then they see the country, uh, the you know, the work culture, maybe or maybe the financial stability. And then they decide that I, I want to continue. Right. Or maybe this yeah. is where I want to settle. Uh, did you ever get such type of thought, uh, you know, when you when you went to when you when you maybe finished your one year program? So uh, once I finished my one year program, uh, again, I remember this conversation I had, had with my father and he came back and uh, he, of course, was always of the keen opinion that I should uh, settle in the US. So uh, he said, uh, what about doing a master's program now that you have finished this? What about doing a master's program? So I said, uh, I thought about it and see, my one year was spent in uh, Boston, uh, which is in the northeast of the country. Very cold. That first winter was brutal, uh, very depressing. Uh, in that first winter because it gets dark at about uh, 3, 3.30 in the afternoon. And uh, so long <laughs> nights. So a uh, lot of snow and cold. Of course, being from Mumbai, you're not used to all of that. So I survived through all of that. Uh, along with that survival, I also had to make sure that I uh, meet the mark, uh, so to say, at school, at the initial school, because here was a person coming from India who did not even probably do a single crown cutting in college. And uh, there we were given patients and said, okay, here, manage the entire patient, do the complete treatment planning. Of course, uh, there were professors to help, but they also wanted to see a certain level that you have reached in dental college, which most of my contemporaries in uh, Boston University had already reached. So that was a challenge for me in trying to mark up uh, myself in getting to the level that they had already reached. So those first six months were very bad. I mean, uh, bad in terms of, uh, you know, constantly hearing from the professors saying that I was not up to the mark, I need to still improve. Uh, patients, of course, had to keep coming back for uh, treatment because I was a little slow in uh, doing things. Uh, winter, as I mentioned, brutal. And then slowly I started seeing the bend starting about probably February of uh, the year. My uh, term started in June of 2007. So around Feb of 2008, I started seeing myself improving a lot. And then the thought process opened up saying, okay, if I had to do a master's, what's next? Which, which subject would I choose to? Uh, the first process, I again, always have, my mind has always been that of a surgical person. So I thought, okay, maybe oral surgery. Uh, and many of your listeners may know, and you may also know, oral surgery in the US is a six-year program yeah. where you also have to go back to medical school. So you get an MD degree as well as your uh, master's in oral surgery. I said, I'm not going to invest six years of my life in doing something, you know, which I have an interest, but six years of my life, maybe not. So yeah. then I said, okay, uh, how about uh, uh, prosthodontics? Again, prosto was a big clinical subject. Uh, funnily enough, in Boston University, I used to see my prosthodontic colleagues, my uh, MD, MS colleagues who used to do their MS program. They used to come at three in the night to do wax ups for their next morning's patient. And I said, this is not something that I look myself, I, I see myself doing. I mean, I cannot forego my sleep and come at three in the night and work until 4, 4.30, go back, sleep, come back again. So then, of course, uh, my father being a periodontist, I have always seen him doing surgeries. And uh, I said, perio seems like a good choice. So I applied to different perio programs. And uh, I got accepted in, of course, Boston University and at uh, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, which uh, I chose. And uh, luckily enough, once I started that program, I started liking the country. I thought that, okay, yes, maybe this is not too bad of a thing to just settle back here. So then my uh, concentration was in trying to finish this program. and in the meantime, trying to give my licensing exam, National Board Part 2. I had already taken Part 1 before. So trying to take the Part 2 so that I could meet the requirements, start applying for licenses and all of that. So you so could say that... Before, before, before you say it, then, you know, I'm sure you may be now saying, how, why did you decide to come back? I think that is where you are reaching. So right. we'll, we'll keep it a little bit sure. later. But, uh, you know, you mentioned two points here, right? And we know this. We know this at undergraduate level. Somehow, somehow the curriculum in India... Is, I don't know that we have the curriculum. Theoretically, we are very strong. But when it comes to practical exercises, we still feel. And even I felt that, that in spite of being the topper at undergraduate level, I felt I lack clinical skills. That is That was a strong motive, motive to go to post-graduation. So you, you said, okay, you know, when you go to residency program. So residency programs, you went there, you found challenges. I'm, I'm interested to know that 
was there any difference between the teachers because see, if if in india if we don't know things we have different kind of teachers some will simply let us go some will really criticize us in a harsh way uh, how were how were the teachers in uh, your residency program and how did they handle or how did they motivate you or help you to pass this difficult phase, phase of 6 month right so uh, again see uh, that is one thing you have both kinds of teachers everywhere okay so even i had my share of uh, both kinds of teachers where uh, uh, two of them would motivate me and one of them would criticize me saying oh you don't know anything you know where 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 have you come from why are you not doing this and this is so basic so mm-hmm. but uh, again in the end it uh, i guess uh, just fell upon me to choose the right criticism to go with someone who's motivating me and under their help just keep doing so it was all about practice if uh, you think about it from june 2007 to almost until uh, december of 2007 i did a lot of crown cuttings of diaprox and that was a part of the curriculum where we had to submit a few uh, uh, crown cuttings but i did more than that i wanted to get better so it was the same with endo i did a lot of endo on diaprox on extracted teeth uh, did a lot of endo practice so when again as i said i started to uh, uh, turn the bend around uh, jan feb when i started seeing patients and i could see the difference because when i first saw a patient i still remember i did a crown cutting sometime in september of 2007 i took one and a half hours to cut a single molar and my professors kept coming back and saying oh you're still working you're still working and these are appointed patients i mean i have my next patient waiting and uh, here i am still doing the same thing and i had to prep the tooth and give a temporary crown so it took me almost about 1 hour 45 minutes uh, to do this entire thing and uh, that was when it motivated me saying i need to do it quicker so chair side or after hours i used to go at around uh, 10:30 at night because i used to stay close to the school in boston i used to have the, they used to give us the key to the school so i used to go practice come back so i started seeing the uh, me getting better sometime in february where i could complete a complete uh, uh, crown cutting and temporization in about 40 to 45 minutes so i think a lot of practice taking the right motivation from the right people and ignoring the ones who are just criticizing you without uh, giving you any help and that goes a long way in uh, helping you make a better person i think you made a very good point and i really respect uh, you know you are you are talking very genuinely from your heart uh, by sharing how it was difficult initially in in a foreign countries i'm sure these type of difficulties uh, you know people are not aware everybody may feel that you know everything is very easy when you go to foreign countries but there are challenges and you did mention it so uh, i'm really uh, I, i just wanted to know that how is exactly this residency is it like internship uh, your agd program is it like uh, internship in india or it is it is really uh, you know like you have a lot of patients compared to india where is the difficulty is it more in india or it was more in the, the us so uh, now to uh, kind of get the facts straight in the us each dental student goes through their four years but they don't have an internship at the end okay so as soon as they finish their four years they are out in the world they can go out and practice off late uh, and when i say off late i'm talking about uh, since the early 2000s a lot of dental students are thinking or they know that they are not practice ready when they graduate what will make them practice ready are these programs so agd is like an internship for example you can say that where these dental graduates get accepted into a program they basically take care of patients in a comprehensive way so for example i was given a chair let's say in room 701 in boston university any patient who comes in they have a pool of these residents so we were about i think 10 of us patients were given to us okay like one by one as they came in they were assigned to us we had to take care of their entire mouth as if we were in a private practice so it is like a glorified internship so for example if one mr smith comes in and he needs a root canal he needs a denture he needs a crown he needs various other things i am the one taking care of everything so i'm not going to refer it unless there is something that i did not know at that time which was implants so I refer him to the implant department he would get it he would come back to me i would so it was as as much as like you're running a practice as much as you're running a dental practice in a school setting with professors being there to help you if you are uh, doing something the professor had to check every step like in a school so that is how uh, this uh, agd residency worked it was like an internship but the us residents who were uh, was a us graduate got paid to do this whereas i did not have any, to pay any fees neither did i get paid so all i did uh, was had my living expenses and uh, nothing beyond that yeah so then you decided your uh, ms uh, program and how was that experience uh, did it again motivate you to continue you know what was the strong motivation factor to continue because 
uh, i agree to your fact what you said that uh, i i went to cleveland and um, it was when i went for the first time by 5 o'clock it was quite dark and i i really <laughs> felt very discomfortable when it happened for the first time because we we in india you you it is night it is dark you know that in next one hour you are going to sleep right but in foreign countries you see that the you know sun has set at 5 or 6 o'clock but you will be sleeping after 5 6 hours okay. so that is yes. something which was very difficult to you know get used to at beginning second thing is i we don't find people walking too much on the roads and all like you know mumbai to i am sure you know it is right. like it is too crowded that is also something which which people find it very difficult because you don't see people everywhere right. so those are the two things which initially was difficult but then you tend to settle down and become comfortable you know so i'm sure you must be having the similar experience but you again uh, went and did the ms period and how was that experience was it different than the residency program where the, did you find different teachers there what was different in education and the quality so it was completely different from what i did in my agd because either you can uh, say that i was seasoned enough by the time i finished my agd to uh, manage all the challenges that came with uh, a residency program so by the time i entered my perio program i think uh, i knew what i had to do to meet up uh, you know to my uh, peers in terms of my uh, work and other things so i think uh, that made me ready the other thing about uh, the fact that uh, you know in an ms residency and you similar to an mds here in india you make close friends because you're in a whereas in an age it was a very short time one year is not uh, you know a good enough time to yeah, you know know people and especially uh, in different uh, country different people uh, exactly yes. but uh, by the time i started in chapel hill i think uh, again i started making good friends and uh, we had a good uh, uh, group of people if you say so one thing that i made sure of uh, not doing and this may seem surprising to some i ensured that i did not have any indian friends and that is nothing to do with anything of that sort but i wanted to grow as a person so i wanted to meet people from other cultures other countries so most of my friends were from other countries other cultures so i think that helped me mold uh, it molded me more as a person than anything else again uh, got to attend different kinds of weddings different kinds of ceremonies <laughs> different kinds of uh, events festivals so that opened up the entire uh, country to me uh, and then once that happened i said okay this is not bad i mean i can see myself settling down in this country so i again as i mentioned i started working towards that residency was great uh, i had a good amount of mentors who would guide me as to what i need to do to be successful as a pedontist one of the main things about a residency in the us is it will give you what you put in there is no molly coddling there is no hand holding as such it is what you want to see yourself become you have to work towards it so if you want to see more patients feel free to see more patients if you want to see less patients and uh, be laid back feel free to do that as well there is nobody going to push you and say oh you're not seeing too many patients go in you know do more do more no a residency is where an adult goes in he is going in with his own interest trying to learn more and then learns more and comes out of it so that is one thing for people who are listening who want to go into residencies and even in india i think it's slowly turning into that way and it should it should yeah. the interest yeah. should stem from the person who's doing the residency saying i want to learn more it's not about the teacher but, pushing but them this is something which is lacking uh, uh, dr akshay as a teacher i feel do you do you feel that the students age does make does it make a difference i'm sure when you went to residency uh, you know you may be it is like when we come out of uh, internship we are just uh, maybe 24 25 the thought process at 24 25 the thought process at 26 27 is different if we tell our teachers that it's the same thing which you have told told me now that if i if i tell to student that you have to learn you have to do things somehow that that doesn't uh, that doesn't come everywhere but the same student after 2 years like uh, maybe 10 years back as a post graduate i thought okay whatever i have learned is sufficient but after 10 years i feel there is so much to learn even today in dentistry sure. do you think that age that maturity also matters in the learning process i think so i, I mean it makes a complete difference and uh, i used to uh, teach the undergraduate students in the us uh, because i was teaching the third and fourth year dental uh, students uh, the subject of periodontics and they used to come and ask me about how to apply for residency programs i always used to tell them i said if you have time on your hands and if you don't have family obligations go out work for a few years then come back and do residency i used to always say that because your maturity level at as you correctly mentioned at 27 28 is way ahead as compared to if you do a residency at let's say 24 25 those two years make a lot of difference 
going outside and practicing in the outside world gives you a completely different perspective of what you want to learn and what you want to do. That helped me in AGD. I think I matured during that one year of AGD where it helped me in identifying what I wanted to do. So I always advise students, again, in India, it's always like, huh, finish BDS, I apply for the MDS exam, get MDS, whatever subject I want, I'll do MDS. Whereas I feel that they should concentrate on working for a year or two and then trying to see where so that's a very nice uh, advice to the youngsters and uh, it is amazing to listen to people who have different different approaches towards uh, dentistry and i truly respect it so then you then you decided to do an ms and it was a different experience for you then uh, what what did it change what 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 are the things which changed i i just wanted to know before that were you married uh, uh, when you went to residency or uh, you know the uh, ms program so, uh, no, I was not married. Uh, again, uh, I was uh, in a long distance relationship with my wife, Aparna. And uh, again, we started talking around the second year of my residency. And we kept in touch. And at the same time, she was doing her residency in Mangalore, A.B. Shetty. She is a periodontist as well. So okay. she did that from A.B. Shetty, Mangalore. So we kept in touch. And then at the almost the end of our residencies, we said, okay, I think we should take this to the next step. So we got engaged. And uh, a year later, we got married. Uh, we got married just six months after our residency got over. So uh, we got married in the December of uh, 2011. And uh, of course, because I was already there, I my first job took me down to Florida. I got a position as an assistant professor of periodontics at NOAA Southeastern University. So I uh, came, got married, and then within six months, Aparna joined me uh, at Florida. So the next thought process, of course, there was, uh, what can Aparna do there? Because uh, again, you know, being highly qualified herself with an MDS, uh, it didn't make sense for her to sit at home. But uh, we had to explore the options of uh, if we were planning to settle down there, what would be the route that she has to take? Or if we had to think about coming back, what would be the option? So that is where we kind of hit a fork. And we said, okay, let us decide what we need to do. And at that point in time, I uh, went and uh, spoke to my program director uh, in Nova Southeast. And I said, how can we help my wife uh, get into this uh, system? So he said, uh, see, there is one thing that we could do is uh, we can uh, provide an opportunity for her to observe in the school setting. And then by that time, I knew that the best way to settle down would be either a DDS program or an MS program. Now that, of course, comes with a, a huge financial thing uh, when you talk about uh, doing a DDS again. And here is, uh, I had just finished my program with a loan, of course. So I had just started paying off my loan for my MS. And then we started thinking about what should Aparna do? Uh, unfortunately, uh, I lost my father-in-law just about uh, a year before we got married. So we had getting been engaged and uh, we lost my father-in-law. So Aparna's mom was alone here in Mumbai. So that was always at the back of her mind saying, I need to be back for her in Mumbai. But again, if I get to do something in the US, I don't mind doing it. So we sat down, we put pen to paper and we calculated what it would take, you know, to uh, uh, get her to uh, do a DDS program. Of course, she passed in NBD uh, one in flying colors. So we knew that we could start applying to programs. Uh, at that point of time, uh, we thought about the fact that if she did apply to programs, it would again be a long distance because it may or may not happen that she may get it in Nova Southeastern where I was there. She may have to go somewhere else to do a program. And that is one thing we decided right at the start that we are not going to do long distance anymore. So somewhere we also thought about from the personal point of view, I know a lot of your listeners probably tune in to only get professional advice here, but <laughs> here is some personal advice as well coming forth. So that's, think, that's very um, important because uh, everybody gives professional advices, very less people give uh, personal advices. Exactly. So again, uh, uh, you may or may not think I'm qualified to do that, but please, uh, I'll, I'll just uh, share my story. So at that point of time, we said, uh, okay, we are not going to do long distance. So whatever has to be done, has to be done here. Now, Nova Southeastern being a private university, the DDS fees is very high. It's a two and a half year program. So uh, there is part of second year that has to be repeated and then third year and fourth year. So we talked, uh, chalked down the expenses and it came to almost about, uh, I would say $500,000. So either I had to take a loan, I still was paying off my loan from my MS with a co-signer. So to find another co-signer for her was the first task. Did we want to actually put 500,000 again, settle down here with always the thought at the back of our mind saying, uh, or, you know, the parents are back there and maybe we should go back. And so uh, we, I, Honest enough, we tried for about a year or two to, uh, in this decision-making process, saying, uh, should we do this? And then uh, in that meantime is when she took her national board exam. Started applying and, uh, of course, uh, did not get in Nova Southeastern. So we were looking at other options. And then we said, no, we are not even taking other options. Uh, 
Nova Southeastern University was glad enough the following year to say, okay, we can offer it. But by that time, I think uh, we said, okay, the, the amount is too much because even as a faculty, I was not getting any discount to, for her to do her uh, uh, DDS. So then we said, uh, and this took us to year 2013. So in 2013, uh, we decided that uh, let us explore other countries. Okay, so because again, we knew for sure that Aparna had to do something. So if not the US, then where else? I got an opportunity to uh, teach at Hong Kong University. So I, uh, in fact, they flew me down for an interview from the US, went to Hong Kong, one of the best universities in the world uh, at Hong Kong University. They offered me a position, but uh, again, there was something in terms of the remuneration did not match what I expected. So I said, I don't think. The reason why I even went for the Hong Kong meeting was it was not India, but it was close to India. So we were trying to see if we could move closer uh, to our country. So when that did not work out, uh, then of course, uh, Aparna uh, became pregnant and our son was born in 2014. At that point of time is when we decided, okay, I think uh, we ought to move back to India. So I'll, I'll continue my story. If in case you have any questions in between, I'll answer that and then continue my story. Or I can No, please, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Okay. So I think at that point of time, once our son was uh, you know, uh, conceived, we said, okay, let us chalk out our future from here on so that we have it easy in terms of thinking. So I went down, I said, okay, this is the amount of loan that I still have to pay back, which will take me about, so from 2013, it uh, would take me about two years to pay back my loans. So I got an offer from uh, East Carolina University in uh, Greenville, North Carolina. Uh, much better pay in terms of, uh, you know, being an assistant professor, much, much better job profile. So this this was still school. when you were in US. The, now you are still yeah, in US, US when you go. This was yeah. uh, in North Carolina. There are two schools in North Carolina. Okay. And this was the other school in North Carolina where I got an offer to teach. So I grabbed that opportunity because it meant being closer to my friends from residency who were there already. And uh, I was familiar with North Carolina as a state. So after living in Florida for about two and a half years, we moved back to North Carolina. One of the main thought processes there was the fact that I could actually pay off my loan faster because I was making more once I moved back to North Carolina. So we already had decided that, yes, we are going to move back, but I need to pay back my loan before I move back. So we started working towards that. Our son was born in North Carolina and uh, I took, I think by 2015, I had paid off all my loans and uh, we said, okay, now I think is the time that we will move back closer to our parents. So December, 2015, Aparna and Atharva came back to India. I had to tie up a few loose ends and uh, 2016, uh, June, 2016 May is when I came back uh, to India and uh, started working. This must be a real, I don't know whether it was a very hard decision or, uh, you know, maybe by now you might have had many reasons to decide that to come back. Because I, I completely believe when, uh, when we have family, our thought process again changes. But uh, if you can tell me that uh, before talking about the, the other reasons for coming back, what, were, what would be the reason to stay in US? Because good you question. said you were having good pay, right? You finally yes. paid your loan back. You had a kid, I'm sure, US, US citizen, yes. right? You have, by now, you have a lot of friends. Yes. Who are very, maybe a few of them were very close to you. And uh, you have definitely like... It may not feel like India, but you start, uh, you know, having an attachment to that country also. Because when I went to Cleveland, I stayed for very long, less duration because I went to give my exam. Even, you know, uh, it was a presidential debate during that time. You know, that was Trump, not Trump. I think Trump and maybe that time. So, yes, Trump yes. And Hillary. Trump and Hillary yeah. at that time. So you start feeling like maybe it is your country and you are it is your election which is happening, right? You have stayed there for so many years. What was this duration from your residency? Uh, 2007 June to 2016 May. So nine years almost. So it is like a decade. It's like a decade. Yes. And uh, I don't know how many years you actually require for a green card or the citizenship. But 10 years is something which is very big, which you invested what were if you if you if you list down the good things to which can help you to stay in US? What will be those? So uh, I'll just take a step back here. Uh, when you asked me about what were uh, when I decided to come back, I think immigration was a big issue. Still is a big issue uh, right now in the US. So as dentists, uh, when you go into private practice, you of course get an H one B visa. This H one B visa is very limited every year. There are only about eighty thousand or one hundred twenty thousand H one B visas. So you are competing against these software people and then you get stuck in a line for the green card, which right now for a person with an H-1B visa takes at least 
it's about 15 to 20 years. So you can imagine, I still have friends in the US who applied for a green card in 2010 and 11, who still haven't got it. So it's been more than 10 years, still haven't got it. So that was one thing which I did not want to keep waiting for. Uh, so that probably hastened my return. The other reason, of course, why it hastened my return, I loved the country. I did not mind staying back there. But seeing Aparna be at home, you know, not doing anything after having studied so long was not something that was, uh, you know, uh, good to see. And it was not something that she liked to do as well. After having studied so much, we always want to put that into work. So one of the reasons uh, of staying back in the US would be where both the husband and, and I'm talking about couples here. Again, if you're single, again, you have the whole, the world is your oyster. You can decide what you want to do, where you want to do. But once you get married, I think that is where your thought processes have to match, have to meet up and then come to a decision. So that is where uh, our thought process is matched. And we said, okay, we don't mind coming back. But if there, you're uh, someone who is looking to settle down, then you want to meet someone who wants to settle down there as well. And once both your minds meet, and then you can work towards that. So at that time, it does not even matter whether you're taking a big loan or whether you're trying to pay off because you're going to work there, pay off the lay loans right there. But the only point that I would want to say is don't make the long distance relationship that may happen of going to different schools too long. So I get a lot of people who ask me for mentorship of how to go to the US. And so uh, I always ask them, I said, are you going there, getting married and going there or are you going there as single? And it may feel a little intrusive to some people that I'm asking them about their personal lives. But that's a very important point before we decide about settling down in a country. Because if you're going to get married, and I know a lot of uh, female dentists who get married to software engineers, they go, go to San Francisco or go to some other areas uh, in the US. And once they start giving exams and once they start getting acceptances from different schools, that is where they have to go and work in some other uh, country, uh, another state, whereas their husband in another state. Some of them ask me, can I just straight away do an MS? MS has a limited number of states that you can practice in. You cannot practice in all states. And the number of states are reducing by the year as we speak, because all the states now want to limit the number of people that they want to bring in. So they are mandatorily requiring them to do a two-year DDS or an AGD before they give in licenses. So I think uh, it takes a big toll on the personal lives of people when they are separated and one is studying and studying DDS is not easy. There are a lot of pressures. There are a lot of pressures from the school on one hand and on the other hand, you have to maintain a family. I have seen people do that and hats off to them. I mean, they have maintained a family. They have brought up children while they're doing DDS and I've seen that struggle. So if there is someone who does not want to struggle, then that country is not for you. That country, there's a lot of struggle involved. So if you're willing to do that, if you're willing to see again through that struggle and then see yourself settling down there, I think you should completely go for it. It's a beautiful country. There is good returns. Again, when I say good returns, you have to think about the fact that you will be taking a loan. Many of them, of course, will be taking a loan and majority of your life, you will be paying that loan because that is how the country works. The country, unfortunately, works on loans. So you will be taking credit. It works on credit and you'll be paying off the loans on one side while you're leading your life on the other. So for someone who is not used to that concept, it may feel very alien, may feel very different. Yeah. I think uh, you have really summed up, you know, uh, the confusion which may arise when you have responsibilities. And uh, uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if you just remember your uh, good, uh, you know, the days in the US, what are the things which you actually miss uh, from your education in uh, United States? So the main thing that I, again, I miss my residency. I missed my, uh, the people in my residency, but, uh, and the reason why I miss my residency. And when I say I miss my residency, I miss seeing that kind of residency here in India. I've seen a few uh, MDS programs here. What I see is that, uh, we were given the confidence there to do anything that we wanted while having somebody uh, behind us trying to guide us. So it was not where somebody is constantly on your back saying, Oh, do this, do this, do this. No, it yeah. is like, okay, you know what, go ahead, walk ahead. I'm behind. If you fall back, I'll hold you up. You know, that kind of uh, residency where I got to explore a lot of things. I got to do different kinds of things, see what I liked and go in that direction. And that helped me grow as a person. And the same thing happened when I joined as an assistant professor as well. As you rightly said at the start of our uh, interview, that uh, learning never stops. So even while I was teaching, I was learning. The more I taught, the more I learned. The, the interaction with the students was amazing. Again, here I'm not into teaching that much, but I hope to do that in the near future. But uh, just the interaction with the students, uh, them picking my brains about different aspects, me going back into the book saying, okay, this is a question, let me see how I can answer it, how I can teach them, how I can make a difference in their lives. So that camaraderie, that friendship that you make with either your colleagues or even with your students, 
it's not much of a professor student relationship it's it's more of a colleague relationship i think that collegiate atmosphere is something that i miss and i don't see that here i hope it's changing here but i don't see it currently okay i think that's a valid point and i always tell my students that uh, the reason you want to do post graduation is that you become independent so that when you come out you can decide everything of course you need mentors you still need mentors everywhere like yes. i needed mentors like you there are so many people you know clearing after nbd who have guided me my brother my brother was a liver transplant surgeon came back from us the next day when he finished and he also told me similar things what he had told and uh, what was one thing which he has mentioned that if you put a lot of money in us uh, even you may not be happy but you still have to stay there to repay the loan that is something which he mentions and uh, viewers please note that this podcast is just to guide you uh, you know with our personal experiences of course each personal experience everybody's struggle is different and if it is something if god has written that you will shine in united states then you will shine if you have written he has written that you are shining you will shine in india then that is the plan what you have uh i think uh, if, i just want to make one point so one more factor that uh, when we decided to come back was the timing aspect of it and a lot of people uh, asked me about this i said uh, they asked me as to why did you decide to come during that time and not later or not earlier i think uh, uh, once our son was born we waited so he was about one and a half when we came back we did not want to wait too long because let's be honest once they grow up they go into their social surroundings they make friends at that point of time it's very difficult to pluck them out from that social surrounding and then bring them to another country uh, for him which would be foreign would be india at that time so i, th- I we thought about all of that and we said we had to bring him at an age where he could still be molded you know and uh, would not remember anything from the other country so uh, that's when when he came in at one and a half he did not have any memories and now of course he's growing up here he's happy of course he has his uh, us citizenship so in case he wants to go there anytime in the future he always has that uh, uh, opportunity for him. to go and yeah. opportunity goes and if he wants to stay back here he still has that opportunity because he's grown up here so i think that was the point why we decided to come back during that time and did not wait any longer uh yes. some people ask me like if you could wait longer you could have made more money i said you know that is not an aspect you will make money here or there but the relationships that you want to build they should be built soon and should be long lasting so we wanted to come back at a time when we could be there for our parents and uh, this last two years pandemic really solid solidified our decision of coming <laughs> back where we could be close to our family sure. while they were going through all of this as well i think that is well known fact uh, that uh, uh, social life is uh, we have a lot of social life i don't know whether people who have not gone to us they may not uh, know the difference it is every student who is watching this should go to foreign countries that is when we actually know whether there is any difference otherwise listening to people we may think that it is always wrong whatever they are saying no that is not possible uh, you know that can't be things can't be like that there cannot be struggle in united states you know that may be their opinion but uh, uh, and the other thing is uh, sorry to interrupt the other thing yes. is i always tell uh, when you go to another country you learn more about your own country when you yes. are there yes and what was those important things which uh, which you learned from you know when you go I to the uh, states right i think see the uh, uh, concept of uh, you know uh, being a family is in both countries the concept of friendship where you, you meet only during weekends and sometimes it can be a little more formal whereas here you can knock in at any time go in the middle of the night to you see your friend and you know all of that, that aspect of it uh, is something different but what you do learn about your country is the melting pot of cultures that we have here i think uh, that is something and you also know for a fact that problems exist everywhere people still have a problem with the different religions different cultures but i think we are blessed uh, in this country to see that and uh, again i did see that camaraderie in the us also but uh, the problems exist in both countries so if if uh, again the uh, uh, end result as i would call it is the fact that uh, the grass is always greener on the other side you know <laughs> but yeah. sometimes the grass could be more greener on your side as well <laughs> if you just turn back or look down so i have last two questions to ask you here uh, because sure. uh, one thing which you which we always value in india is about relations you did mention at the beginning of the podcast that you said you made friends uh, with uh, you know not indians maybe different different people right will you ever feel as close as you feel with uh, you know our our own people in india uh, will, will is it possible i i think so i mean the friends uh, that i made uh, the friendship that i forged with a few people with my roommates who lived there and with a few close people uh, we still keep in touch and uh, even we may not talk for about a few months but again we can immediately connect back so i think i you can certainly forge relationships like that 
uh, they were nice enough to come to my wedding here in India uh, when uh, we got married. So I think those are the few friends that I still keep close. And uh, yes, you can forge friendships. You can still keep in touch. I've been longing to see them. I haven't been to the US ever since I returned. So I'm hoping that I can make that trip and uh, meet all of them soon. Okay. So that's, uh, you know, that is definitely helpful for everyone. The last question is, uh, because this is something which many students ask nowadays, because uh, I don't know, somehow people don't want to do post-graduation. I don't know what is the idea behind this. I have always told students, that you should do post-graduation if you feel like doing post-graduation. That is one thing. And second thing is, if your post-graduation is, you know, uh, similar to your undergraduation, then you won't find the difference. It's like students should struggle in post-graduation because we value at the end, it is the struggle which is valued, you know, in our life. Thanks. So the students do ask me that, can we go to US, learn something and come back? Will it have value in India? This is the last question which I want to end with the podcast and what is your opinion? So, yes, students can learn and come back. The problem comes when you are going there to learn, you're investing a lot of money. If you have a good amount of money saved or let's say your parents are helping out with that and they're willing to give that where you learn something and come back, sure enough, please do that. I mean, there is no uh, thing to learning. You can learn anywhere in the world and learning in the US has a big advantage. You get to see different kinds of mentors. You get to meet different kinds of people. You get to treat different kinds of patients. So yes, that certainly is a neat thing. But always be aware, when you go to a foreign country, or for that matter, US, UK, and thing, the life is so rosy. I mean, it, it, it is good. I mean, there is no, you know, the quality of life that we call is much better. You have good, clean air, uh, less people. So you always have that at the back of the mind that you are going with an open mind. If in case you want to settle there, then you have to work towards that. So I always tell people that uh, you always have to go there with an open mind, with the fact that your mind or your uh, thought process can change. And then you may say, oh, you know what? I think I like it here. I want to settle. So always be open for that as well. But yes, for somebody who wants to learn, again, coming from the programs that are available, there are very few programs that are available, which uh, are for a year or so. I think University of uh, Los Angeles has a, a fellowship in aesthetic dentistry that is for one year, which I know a few people who have gone there, done and come back. Uh, but not many programs available as such, but please feel free to attend conferences there, which have, will have hands-on. So that will give you a big amount of learning and then you can bring that back to India. What would be the minimum amount to think if somebody wants to go and learn that and come back? How much will be the minimum? So if we are talking about a one-year fellowship, like I told you about the University of Los Angeles aesthetic program, I think that one-year program uh, costs somewhere about, uh, just the tuition fees would be somewhere around uh, $80,000. So if you think about that and living in Los Angeles is expensive. So if you add that uh, $80,000 plus living would be another, let's say $25,000, uh, 25 to 30. So easily you're looking at uh, around $130,000 uh, of uh, going there, doing the program and then coming back. That's that's a quite uh, a lot of money. It's a high amount, yes. Yeah. So doctor, uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, you have shared, uh, you know, your journey as a student your journey as a parent uh, and uh, you know that was so so it was i'm so happy that you have opened up and given the you know in depth perspective of different phases of life when you are in foreign countries and i'm sure the viewers who are listening to this at different phases will you know feel can relate to it once again thank you for uh, your uh, you know uh, advices for the youngsters and uh, for your time for coming on aspire 32 Thank you, Suresh. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, please feel free to uh, share my contact details for anyone who has any uh, doubts about either staying here or going back. And I promise I won't be biased one way or the other. I'll help out uh, based on uh, whatever you would want to uh, do in life. So I would love to hear from all of you as well. Thank you so much for having me.